In all honesty, I really wasn't going to talk about the GT10 Pro. And then I saw this really cool Cyber Mecha style design of the phone. The fact that it comes with only one variant, which is 8GB and 256GB, Dimensity 8050 inside it, 120Hz AMOLED display, and software with absolutely no bloatware inside. And all of this for a shockingly low price of under Rs. 20,000. Obviously, I had to check the phone out, and my impressions are that Infinix has finally created an overall very good package that is totally worth your consideration. That's exactly what I'm going to talk about in this video. If you're here for the very first time, I'm Ershad, you're watching Track and Tech English, your destination for detailed, incisive gadget reviews. Now, I want to start off by talking about the box packaging. I mean, there's a basic retail box packaging in which you get the phone, you get the case, you get the charger, the cable, and the SIM ejector tool. But for a select 5,000 buyers who pre-order the phone, there's a special retail box that comes with something called a gaming kit. And you won't believe it, this gaming kit actually has a Kevlar carry case inside side, it's got gaming sleeves and mechanical triggers also along with it. By the way, the retail packaging of the phone has some cool and fun additions as well. You can actually use the package as a sound amplifier and apart from that, you can also use it as a dock for charging your phone. Now talking about the phone, the design itself is pretty outlandish. It's got all the gamery tropes and elements that you come to expect from a gaming specific phone. Now this color variant is called Cyber Black. There's also a Mirage Silver color and that one apparently has slightly color changing sort of texture on the back. But one thing that's common on both the phones is this massive camera module and five strips of LED that are there within that module itself. Of course, you can configure this LED strip for incoming calls, notifications, even when you're playing games as such. It's fairly well implemented. It's like a notification LED, but there are five of them. It's not like anything like, you know, nothing as such. Of course, this is a transparent glass back and you can see what is there inside in terms of the design itself. But I mean, nothing just goes a little bit more further ahead in terms of the implementation implementation and in terms of getting you involved in using their glyph lighting pattern. But then again, comparing it with a nothing phone won't really make sense. I think that this does its own thing. But one thing I was constantly wondering about is if uh, Infinix did go for the glass back and the transparent look, they should have gone for an all RGB design, right? I mean, gamers love it. I'm not a fan of it but they should have done that. Now talking about the functional elements apart from the design itself, which is of course outlandish, Infinix has gone all out with what you get with the phone. So of course you've got a Type-C port at the bottom, you've got a 3.5 mm headphone jack, a proper stereo speaker and a SIM card tray, which is not an hybrid, it's actually a proper dual SIM setup plus micro SD card support is also available. So yeah, in terms of functionality and in terms of design, Infinix has done a really good job with the GT10 Pro. Frankly, not everything is like fantastic about the phone. If Infinix has has given you all the features and made it look good. There is no finesse in the design, primarily because if you look at the symmetry, basically, if you look at the SIM card tray, just take a look at it, where it is placed. It's just complete, it's touching the edge. That completely gets my OCD, man. Now, these are the kind of things that sort of take away from the premium experience. But then again, I think that considering the fact that there are functional elements all available out here, a lot of people won't complain about it. Now, as for the in-hand feel, it's a boxy design. Of course, you can see that it's got flat side. It's a plastic side by the way, and it's 8.1 millimeters thick and about 180 grams in weight. So the in-hand feel is actually very good. You don't even need to use it with a case. I like it. So overall, when it comes to design and functional elements that are available with the design of the phone, I like it. There is nothing to complain about as such, except for that symmetry bit, which is just a pet peeve of mine. Okay, let's talk about the display. Again, Infinix has gone all out. 6.67 inch AMOLED display, 120 Hertz refresh rate, which also is a variable refresh rate in the sense that you can switch between 60, 90 and 120. And apart from that, you get a touch sampling rate of 360 Hertz. The peak brightness is 900 nits. So it does get plenty bright outdoors. So you do not have to worry about sunlight legibility either. And this is a 10 bit panel with DC IP3 color gamut as well. It's a fairly well tuned panel. I'm talking about in perspective of the budget category. Now, if you're talking about HD, you get support on YouTube, but you do not get support on Netflix. HDR tuning is fairly decent, I'd say. It's not too bad. And there's a proper stereo speaker setup, like I mentioned, with support for DTS. And for a 20,000 rupee phone, the stereo speaker setup doesn't sound too bad. That's not it. The headphone jack has support for high-res audio. And apart from that, this phone has support for high-res wireless audio as well. Basically, there is that certification available by default. So when you're looking at the display and multimedia experience, again, very little to complain. Infinix has gone all out of the phone. Now, a lot of phones in this price category, sometimes even higher, they give you an AMOLED display, but then they'll give you a side-mounted fingerprint scanner. Now that I care about a side-mounted fingerprint scanner, they are pretty fast to unlock. So I don't really have much to complain about, but the Infinix GT10 Pro also has an in-display fingerprint scanner. Not the fastest one out there, 
but it's there. Oh, and lest I forget, there's also haptic feedback with x-axis linear motors. Not the best, it's good enough, it's not too bad, but then it also enables 4D game vibration, uh, something that is available on many phones that are aiming to be gaming phones. Let's talk about the performance now, and this is a performance-oriented phone, and the phone has a MediaTek Dimensity 8050 chip inside. Honestly, the nomenclature for MediaTek chips right now is just crazy. You had the 8100, you got the 8200, you have the 7200, you have the 8020, you have the 8050, You've got a 7050, you've got a 1080. Man, my math is really good, I think, if I can remember all these numbers. Anyway, the 8050, let me explain how good is the performance in terms of the antitude scores that we got. We got an antitude score of about 6.7 lakhs. So the 8050 is more powerful than the Dimensity 1080 and the Dimensity 7050. These are chips that are there inside phones like the Redmi Note 12 Pro Plus and the Realme 11 Pro Plus. And it's also more powerful than the Snapdragon 778G or the Snapdragon 778G Plus uh, chip that's there inside the Poco X5 Pro nothing phone one. And most of these phones that I mentioned right now are all priced more than the Infinix GT10 Pro. So under 20,000, if you're getting performance that is worthy of a phone under 30,000, which means that this is one of the best performing phones in this price class. If the Redmi K50i with the 8100, the Dimensity 8100 is available for under 20,000 or around the 20, 21,000 price category, then that becomes the best performing phone. But otherwise this is very good too. There's only one variant, like I mentioned, 8 GB of RAM, 256 GB of storage, 8 GB LPDDR4X RAM and 256 GB UFX 3.1 storage. So the storage read write speeds are fantastic too. We also did run the CPU throttling test where we engaged 40 threads for 30 minutes and we got a CPU step score of about 70%. Obviously, this is not the best. I think it should have been at least 80%, but yeah, this is what you get. Although in the GPU uh, test that we ran with 3 Mark Wireless test test, we got a GPU stability score of about 97%, which is fantastic. And if you're somebody who likes to play Call of Duty like I do, then you can play the game at very high graphics and max frame rates. And it's genuinely a very good gaming phone, even for long gaming sessions. It's been established that the GT10 Pro is a gaming phone, a good gaming phone at that too. But does it have any extra gaming features? If you ask me, yes, it does and one of the really interesting features that I've seen also which felt like why hasn't any other brand done it yet is the fact that you can actually remap the volume buttons to work as physical triggers when you're playing games. So yeah, so if you actually want to use the volume up button for firing the gun in Call of Duty Mobile or volume down button for jumping or sliding, you can do that too. And it works really well. That apart, you also have specific game modes and you need to use a game mode for when you're playing games because then you can switch on the performance mode to extract more juice out of the SoC. Now all that performance, but what about battery? Well, you've got a 5,000 mAh battery inside and it supports 45 watt fast charging speeds as well. You can easily expect a single day worth of battery life with about 10 to 20% left in the bank. And the 45 watt charger takes about one hour to completely charge the phone from zero to 100%. But the 45 watt charger that you get inside the box has a feature for bypass charging, which is basically nothing but when you connect the phone to a charger. And if you want to play a game at that time, then the phone doesn't overheat too much because it traps all that heat within the charger itself. And as for network performance, you've got support for 14 5G bands and Wi-Fi 6 as well. All right, <laughs> now talking about the software. Now this phone is running XOS 13 based on Android 13. And the first time I booted up the phone, I was really excited to see and tell you guys as well is the fact that this doesn't have any third-party bloatware app. So no Moj, no Josh, none of the unwanted apps are pre-installed on the phone. But yes, there are first-party apps like Xarena, Xclub, Xtheme that are present on the phone and they can only be disabled. Some cannot be even disabled. So yeah, that's there. That's something I have to keep in mind. Infinix has also promised one year of OS updates and two years of security updates as well. Hopefully they will also give it on time. Now I did use the phone and with Xarena OS, it's got a lot of really cool features within the phone itself. A lot of extras that you generally don't get with regular stock Android experience. For example, you can clone apps, there's a special kids mode, there's a special simple mode. All of those things are baked within the operating system itself. And what I like about XOS is that it's a pretty lightweight install. So it runs extremely smooth. It runs pretty fast. Very well done. Also, let me tell you that if you do buy the GT10 Pro, then the first thing that you'll notice is that this phone does come with the game gamery theme sort of pre-installed, something that I'm not a fan of, but then you can of course change the wallpaper and all of that. So software experience is also a thumbs up from me. Good job Infinix. Should have given two years of software updates promise at least, but 
I think we'll take one year for now. All right, let's talk about the cameras. And this is where Infinix might have skimmed out a little. You get a 108 megapixel primary camera, 2MP plus 2MP, uh, two cameras. I think one of them is depth, the other is macro. I'm really not sure about it. And on the front, you get a 32 megapixel selfie camera. If you guys are saying, oh, well, you should know about the 2MP cameras, I shouldn't. It doesn't really matter. Those are, you know, waste bin cameras. They should go inside the waste only. Coming to the primary camera performance, generally what I notice is that the moment you open the camera app, you'll see AI cam on Infinix, which means that it's always using artificial intelligence intelligence to detect the scene and then take a picture. So what happens in that scenario is that it starts tuning the colors, it starts tuning the HDR performance, all of that. For example, in this picture of my dog, it's just very warm. It's very ugly looking. And apart from that, there are no details that are, you know, expected from a 108 megapixel camera. But sometimes the camera also impresses with this low light shot inside the theater where it kind of looks good. But again, low light pictures are not very detailed. And generally with respect to skin tones, they're not very accurate, but they're not too bad either. And if you're asking about HDR, HDR is okay. Not not too bad, but the portrait experience was very good. In fact, the portrait edge cutout and the uh, depth mapping that is there is pretty well done. In fact, the portrait mapping in uh, selfie camera pictures looks very good too, which brings me to the selfie camera, which is actually a pretty decent selfie camera. I was surprised by the kind of pictures that I got with the Infinix GT10 Pro. And apart from that, you can also shoot 4K 30 FPS videos using the primary camera on the rear and 2K 30 FPS using the front camera. What I'll do is I'll actually put all the pictures inside a Google Drive link and share it in the description below. But overall, Camera is probably one area where you shouldn't expect too much from this. That's one area where it's good enough, but not the best. Overall, when you look at the camera experience, it's okay, okay, it's average at best, I'd say. This is where you'd have to make a bit of a compromise. But when you look at the package holistically, and if you look at what Infinix is offering with the GT10 Pro, it's easily targeting at the online audience that games a lot. And this is one of the most value for money phones out there with respect to the kind of features, with respect to the display, with respect to the performance, with respect to the software as well. In fact, it's not like I'll recommend this phone only to gamers. You can consider it even if you're not into the gamer aesthetic or the gamer vibe because the kind of features that you get with it are genuinely useful. Even if you're somebody who wants a good phone under rupees 20,000 for multimedia experience because it's got a headphone jack, good set of stereo speakers, this is worth considering. Now, if you don't like the aesthetic that the GT10 Pro is going for, just slap a case on it and it'll be good to go. Anyway, the phone is not too heavy either. So for under rupees 20,000, this is a good 5G phone. And I am really, really happy about what Infinix has managed out here. Now, would you want any other comparisons with any other phones? Let me know in the comment section below and I'll try to get it done for you. And also do let me know what you guys think of the Infinix GT10 Pro. Do you like it? Do you not like it? And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Until then, keep tracking and stay safe.